What is going on everybody, it's Stas here and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and looking to trade right now in the month of November in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, there's actually one stock in particular that I think has potential to break out here if it does good if it does well on its earnings report and hint hint that earnings report is tomorrow let me know down below in the comments if you guys can guess what stock that is so all i ask from you is if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below hit the like button consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me and if you want to be further connected with the strive smart community two links down below being the strive smart discord group chat and the strive smart facebook group and also the strive smart merch is linked down below as well. So with that further ado, let's get right into it. Starting off here with the SPX, which is the S&P 500. This ended up closing the day up $2.16 here, up 0.07%. And if you guys were watching my video yesterday, I said how, you know, this market is setting up, or it was from yesterday's perspective, kind of setting up for a sell-off. And honestly, from the day before's perspective as well, you know, ever since we hit 3085 we've kind of been selling off you know in the S&P 500 and honestly on the Dow and the Nasdaq as well so due to this I was thinking okay we may be pulling down to this level that I do that I do have drawn out here based on this trend line being around 3060 and we didn't actually get all the way down there we got to about 3066 that we ended up bouncing and kind of finishing on a strong note from there but the fact that we did sell off close to that area um, you know, that kind of was a good sign to me, the fact that we held that area as well. And let me explain to you why. Because if we go, let's say, um, you kind of can see it here on the on the hourly chart. This is kind of bullish because we're seeing how we pull down again to that 3060 area. And we're also holding that 50 SMA, which is on the hourly chart here. And that level has been a support over the past couple of weeks during this insane run that we've been seeing the market. So uh, in the the market, right? So this is looking good in my personal opinion. And what's going to constitute a full on breakout? I'll show you guys right here. And we're also we're kind of already doing that at this point. Um, but really, what we want to see is a break out of this kind of downwards pattern. The first step that we would want to see is a break above both moving averages. And we've already done that. So that's a good sign. So really, just a pop like this um, would really be the next bull run in my personal personal opinion, at least in the short term here. If we do break out, this thing could be really going up to another all-time high at this point, which really is only nine points away. So I wouldn't really be surprised if we did see a massive pop tomorrow and another all-time high if this does end up playing out. And let's say we don't pop tomorrow. Let's say we sell off. What am I going to look for? Well, we may be going to a lower low at that point, maybe hit 3060 on the dot. If we break 3060, the next level we can go to um, if we gap down is going to be around 3050 and so forth um, would be around 3027 but let's not get that far guys because first we have to break below these two levels and until we do I'm not really looking at 3027 as a possibility well it is a possibility but it's kind of far-fetched at this point with how bullish the market has been but again who knows right because this market is pretty crazy and we've all experienced that over the past couple of months, that being the craziness of this market. So let's go to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We hit an all-time high, I believe, yesterday at 27,560. If we go to the five-day, five-minute, you can see that this thing is looking like it's pulling back a bit, right? We hit that peak. We saw a pretty big sell-off this morning, the gap down in terms of the futures and, you know, pre-market. Um, we opened up. We failed breaking out of that 50 SMA. We actually... Um, um, got rejected by it. We dumped even further, hit a lower low at about 27,400. And notice how we actually held the support from two days ago, um, which was a good sign here for the bulls. And the fact that we held above 27,350, 27,400, which is the last uh, all time high, that's a good sign overall for the bulls as well. So at this point, this is just a healthy pullback, guys. Don't freak out and be like, oh my God, this is selling off. It's starting to sell off because honestly, all the charts 
are still looking pretty bullish um, from my perspective, and I'm sure a lot of you guys can agree as well. Let's say this thing does sell off. Maybe we go down to about 27,400, retest that level, maybe even down to uh, you know 27,350 to touch uh, to touch that 50 SMA. That's a possibility. But you know, until we break below these levels. You know, I'm not really looking for um, on a technical basis. It's not really telling me that we're going to see a massive pullback at this point, right? Let's say we sell off uh, into the 27 ones, you know, back into 26 thousands. You know, that's going to be me, you know, seeing a sign that's telling me, okay, we might be selling off further from here and uh, we'll really go with it from there. But as of now, this is looking bullish, just like the S&P guys. And honestly, just like the NASDAQ, if we take a quick look at that, you know, we saw peak at 8250 yesterday or the, the day before nope it was yesterday we sold off found a bit of a bottom here at 8160 and now it seems like we are holding a higher low on top of that 180 SMA on this hourly chart which is a very good sign for the bulls because this is showing us the uptrend is trying to continue if we go to that 4 hour chart we can see how this pull down kind of got us to around the 8120 8150 level which was an old all time high so the fact that we are holding this general area, and again, based on the hourly chart, we're continuing the uptrend. This is a very good sign for the bulls out there, and uh, this chart is screaming higher, 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 in my opinion. We may be going to another all-time high if this does gap up tomorrow, and keep an eye on the futures, guys. Large caps, what are they doing in the morning? If they're gapping up, that could signal hey, it might be a green day today, right? And we can trade whatever we, you know, trade on green days based on that information. So let's talk about what is this stock um, that I am looking to trade if it does break out after earnings? But actually, before we do get into that, guys, let's quickly talk about what I did today um, in terms of my trading session. It wasn't too crazy of a day, but there was some movement. So McDonald's was the first buy I made this morning. And honestly, this trade didn't go, um, um, not that it didn't go according to plan, but it just hasn't fully you know, played out quite yet. It's kind of in the beginning stages of my philosophy here. And let me explain what I mean by that. So you all remember a couple of days ago, I, uh, or I forget when it was like last week, I bought into McDonald's as a swing trade, right? About 194 ended up cutting my losses, I believe on this day. And then the next day guys, literally it pops back up. It was one of those that I got out and then the next day it came back up, but hindsight, hindsight is 2020. So at this point, I didn't know if it was going to come back up. Obviously, now that I know it, I should have held it. But again, hindsight is 2020. So now, like I mentioned in my, my video where I told you guys I took that loss, I was looking to re-enter into McDonald's. And today, I ended up doing that as we broke above this 194, kind of the 193.50 level, which was a resistance. And uh, now we're in this next channel. That's why I entered pretty much, right? Because we broke the main resistance. If we go back to this 184-hour chart, and zoom in a bit. You guys can see last time we broke above it, we filled all the way up to 198. So the goal is at this point, put a little bit of money in, which I did, and look and see tomorrow, are we breaking above the 50 SMA? If it does, I'll add more money and hold up to the fill to 198, or uh, if it breaks that 50 SMA, right? If it doesn't, we get rejected. I might have to cut losses yet again, guys, but hopefully that doesn't happen. I think this looks promising, especially because on the daily chart, you can see the beautiful consolidation on top of that 193.50 to 190 level of support. So as of now, I think I'm up very minimally on the position because I did get in on this little dip at about 193.90 or 80-ish, somewhere right around there. So I have a little bit of a buffer built, but again, I'm only in with an, an initial amount of my goal position. And again, I plan on adding more money if we break that 50 SMA. So another one that I traded today, which just happens to be that stock that could break out after earnings, 
is at V guys ticker symbol ATVI Activision Blizzard. And let's just talk about this one on a technical basis very quickly and fundamentally what's been going on with Activision Blizzard because if we go to this one year chart you guys can see this thing got killed from 66 down to about 40 bucks. That was a massive loss off the top of my head probably 30 40% there. Then we ran up all the way to about 56 bucks and over the past couple of weeks I guess you can say even two, three months at this point, this stock's been fiddling with this 56, 57 level, and it's failed to break out. And in my opinion, this is because, you know, investors, traders out there, they're anticipating and they're waiting to see what this company is going to do in terms of their earnings report tomorrow. And a quick little rundown of what's been really just crushing at V. Let me pick up my phone here and go to the notes tab because I wrote some things down. But the gist of it is they've been really shrinking in terms of revenue. Their revenues have been terrible over the past couple of quarters in terms of growth. And let me bring this up here. So Advi saw quarter three revenue decline sharply between quarter three 2017 and quarter three 2018. Analysts expect that quarter three 2019 decline will be even greater this year, right? So gap EPS is somewhat more varied. This figure grew between quarter three 2017 and quarter three 2018. But EPS for quarter three 2019 is expected to decline by 68% compared to the quarter a year earlier. Announced quarter two EPS represented an upside surprise of close to 86%. Since that last earnings report, Activision Blizzard stock has risen, although this was not an immediate reaction to the release of earnings figures. So overall, between 2017 and 2018, guys, Advi has been getting crushed in terms of their revenue, which is why this stock here has been getting killed, right? From 84 bucks, you guys can see this was about a year ago when they reported that very big decline in revenue, right? From 84 all the way down to that $40 figure that we just talked about, right? Which is very, very bad. So what are they expected to do this upcoming quarter. So this upcoming quarter, they're projected to do 11 cents in EPS, equating to $1.16 billion in revenue. So $1.16 billion is what analysts are expecting. And again, $0.11 cents of EPS. So in my opinion, you know, studying uh, 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 at V's company here over the past couple of quarters, you know, they've been lowballing guidance and guidance has kind of been poor as well. So I think what's going to pop this stock tomorrow is A, if they guide higher higher. If they somehow guide higher, raise that guidance, what is that going to do? That's going to put a lot of optimism into traders' minds and especially investors of the company. Think about it. If they guide up for revenue, if they guide up for EPS, that is a reason for people to buy the stock. People are going to buy more stock. And obviously, if they beat on EPS and if they beat on revenue, which are the two main metrics people look at for the most part um, in terms of just, you know, general earnings, um, uh, you know, overview, the stock should go up as well, in my opinion. But I think the main thing is that guidance. So watch guidance, guys, you know, Investors in general have been underwhelmed with, you know, uh, at V. They weren't too impressed with the BlizzCon event. The presentation at the annual BlizzCon convention last week in California illustrates the challenges facing the company. Obviously, you know, we said the revenue has been crushed, right? And this is mostly because a lot of people have been thinking their games, they haven't really been innovating the games too much. Several analysts said the publisher's new line of video games fell short of expectations just as demonstrators outside the hall pro protested the company's banning of an esports player, um, which honestly I don't really know about uh, too much about that. Uh, but this esports player was from Hong Kong. So not to spend too much time on this, guys. You know, overall, like I said, revenue's been struggling. The company's been struggling, innovating. You know, a lot of the fans they they weren't too crazily you know uh, impressed in terms of um, recent game launches, you know, and uh, innovation. So these are just some things to keep in mind. But again. And if their guidance is, you know, if they, if they, uh, if their guidance is raised, right, 
Rev- revenue EPS they beat on those terms. You know, this stock could be poised to fly up into the 60s based on this one year, one day chart. You guys can see this thing can really gap up from here if it does well um, into the 60s. And honestly, the top of this channel is around 62 to 63 bucks. So that is the stock here at V guys worth watching definitely. And yeah, I traded it. I forgot to mention what I ended up doing today. But overall, guys, I saw the massive gap up today from yesterday and kind of the continuation of the uptrend here riding the moving averages so I took a little position on the dip here in at V and the goal was to really if it broke 50 SMA V50 SMA here uh, the goal was to hold it and really just take the profit if we were to get back up to the $56 level but in this case we kind of already uh, uh, we kind of broke past that very quickly so I actually took a profit right around here I believe 56.10 so overall on the trade I'm made about less than 1%. And yeah, let me know down below in the comments, what do you think about Atvi? So another stock I want to talk about today, which is interesting, is Uber, guys. So Uber reported earnings a couple of days ago as well. Let me pull up my notes to tell you what they reported. They reported negative 68 cents of EPS versus negative 63 cents expected. So they uh, they fell short in terms of EPS, but their revenue topped $3.8 billion versus $3.4 billion expected. Expected their net income, they lost $1.1 billion, which was in line with the expectations. And a lot of people have been waiting for this date, November 6th, which is when the lockup expires in terms of early investors uh, being allowed to sell out of their positions. So a lot of people thought that Uber stock was going to tank today because a lot of people were going to be dumping their shares. And it actually did tank pretty deep to the, uh, today, this morning morning especially we can see how yesterday it closed at about 28 bucks we got all the way down to about 2550 which was a drop of around 9-10% but from there guys you know it kind of consolidated started consolidating a bit and it ended up closing down about 4% so Uber is this a buy right now guys honestly I don't know I'm you know considering maybe building a small position in Uber if it does get closer to 20 bucks maybe be even below that, but I'm really not focusing too much on a business like Uber. I think there's a lot of other places where, um, you know, I could put my money in, into companies that actually profit, right? That are actually profitable. So at this point, you know, Uber, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. Maybe if it finds a bottom, maybe if we find a bottom at 20, 25 bucks, maybe I'll consider, you know, a, a trade, a short-term trade, maybe back up to the moving averages, which we can see on this on the stock, you know, a pattern that it's showing is every time it pushes to a low, you know, RSI gets oversold, we start to run back up again and we test the moving averages, which in this case are the 50 and the 180 SMA. So at this point, we're pretty far away from those moving averages about, you know, 16% to be exact. So if this thing starts to consolidate and make its way back up, I might consider a short term trade on Uber, you know, in the next couple of days, you know, once this selling, uh, once it seems like it's calming down, you know, I might execute it from there. And of course, I'll let you guys know in these videos. But as of now, again, I'm just strictly viewing this as a watch. So very quickly, some stocks that are reporting are uh, SQ, Square, they're reporting today, and I don't know exactly what they reported because I didn't look at them, uh, the earnings before I started filming this video. But if we look in a bit here, we can see uh, really quickly what they did report. They ended up reporting, okay, they beat on EPS 25 cents versus 20 cent estimate, sales came in at 1.26 billion which is up from 880 million um, which is a pretty good growth year over year there for Square so that's pretty good there um, based on the initial numbers I didn't really catch the revenue but I don't want to waste too much time on that um, Roku here they reported and oh my goodness guys they just dumped off a cliff so Roku at this point um, I'm guessing they reported poor earnings again I didn't look at their earnings before but we can see here um, that the, 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 the. 
Again, uh, I can't see it here, guys, but obviously they didn't report too great of earnings. Um, nonetheless, Roku, you know, they're dumping to the floor right now. They might find support at around 113, 115. That's a spot worth watching. Another Qualcomm, uh, another stock rather is Qualcomm, and it seems like they did well on earnings because this stock is running up um, into the 90s here, guys, after hours. So they're up about 4 or 5% at this point. These are just a couple worth watching tomorrow because typically when a company reports earnings the following day, a lot of the time, especially if it's a speculative growth stock, kind of like Roku is, you know, a lot of the time these stocks are very volatile and they offer potential for a short-term trader to come in and profit. So another stock that I'm uh, looking at here is Facebook. And Facebook didn't do too well today, guys, down about 1.5%, but it's still holding that 50 SMA on the four-hour chart here. So this could potentially be a dip entry if we break below there. Um, at that point, we may be selling off even further. I hope that doesn't happen. Um, but in this case, it's holding it, so we have to treat it as a potential higher low until it breaks that level. So another stock here, guys, two more before we end off the video. Disney, we talked about this one, guys, yesterday. Just to cover it very quickly here, it was down 18 cents. They are reporting earnings, I believe, tomorrow. So this is another earnings play that could potentially potentially be massive, right? If they do well on EPS revenue, this stock has fallen a decent amount from its peak, 147 being that peak, that it could maybe see a rally here because to be quite honest, it hasn't really ran too much over the past couple of weeks. It's really just been on a straight up decline. So if they do well, this could be a, a one that pops up. And off the top of my head, guys, I'm pretty sure that's everything that I'm currently watching. You guys, uh, oh my goodness, I almost forgot got about good old you guys here. You guys was actually down 5% today. So I'm actually interested in seeing what are they going to do in terms of um, um, the report in terms of natural gas here. Um, you know, this is going to vary a lot in terms of what the price will be for you guys because tomorrow, Thursday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard is when that comes out. But on a technical basis here, you know, you guys is holding that 50 SMA. It's holding that old 1940 resistance as a support heading into the close. So this is a pretty, pretty good sign here um, in terms of, you know, you guys. But if we get injections in terms of natural gas tomorrow, that could be a short-term uh, blow to you guys, which could bring it down to maybe 1830 maybe even down to uh, the $17 level, $17.50 um, as well. But, you know, if, if the reverse happens, right, we don't get injections, we start to get some withdrawal, you know, this thing could fly up back into the 20s. Who knows? We may be going up to 23 bucks like I talked about in a previous video. So that's it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you do want to see further content from me, and don't forget to join our Strive Smart Discord group chat and our Strive Smart Facebook group and pick up some Strive Smart merch. All of those are linked down below. I appreciate all of you guys, especially if you got to the end of this video. You you are the real MVP. I'll catch you all later.